Good evening, everybody. It's going to be a pretty quick update this evening. Just got some things to show off as opposed to uh, anything really planned to do. Uh, first of all is the thing as promised, the uh, mossy stone area. I know I said I was going to build this on camera this morning, but it ended up taking so long to build the... Uh, build the... or uh, to render the video last night. And this is such a simple and basic thing. I figured I'd just finish it off and then I'd uh, show it to you guys this morning. Uh, so first of all, the vertical does not work. That's why this is here. Um, I thought I had it working. I've seen some videos of people saying this works, but this is just, you know, I'm even tapping the blocks to get them to update, and they are just not showing anything. But down here works awesomely well. So this road here is my feeder, and technically you only need like one feeder block because as soon as it goes from here to there, then it can apparently feed vertically each direction. But this ensures the uh, the maximum opportunity for things to go. And I just have three rows of these, uh, with the last row actually doing cobble off of the brick as opposed to the um, as opposed to needing cobblestone. So as long as the feeder line has moss on it it will transfer to a acceptable target mossy location. And this is basically it. Uh, I had planned originally just to do the walls, so you'd be able to, you know, take down that wall, take down that wall, put it back up, go it around, and it would just wrap all the way around. It's going to look pretty neat. But the whole vertical thing not working out kind of uh, pooched that. So I went more for the looks and just put the moss up on the walls instead. Um, I'm also thinking of, since I have the... Let's see, I don't know. How thick is the floor? Yeah, it is only too thick, but it's underneath here. So I was thinking of running water um, across the ceiling here, so it drips, and it just—I I think it would give a little bit more ambience. Uh, this area here is reserved for setting up a cracked brick area. Um, not too thrilled with it. It takes a while. It's not all that reliable. The blocks don't update that well, so it's hard to tell when they're actually done. There's lava next to them, so you have to deal with that. Uh, Squids has a pretty neat design, though, so I figured I'd just go show that off real quick. Uh, he uses a dispenser block to deploy a block of lava. The lava flows up and down along the sides in an area... I want to say... 9 wide? Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, let's count this off here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it's only seven wide. There you go, I'll just show you. So, you hit the button, it dispenses a source block of lava. The lava then spreads out, uh, three in each direction. And now, here's what we're going, what you have to do though. See how tapping the block made it update? There's another one. And now to get these last two to change over, or to get anything except for those two to change over. Uh, this is, goes back to being a bit of a, a guessing game. Is uh, oh, There we got three. But it takes a while, you kind of have to tap it. I mean, you can always just walk away and come back later, log in, log out. Uh, anything that would cause the blocks to update would eventually show this off. Uh, I don't know why the mossy works so well and the cracked does not. But anywho, once you get your selection of cracked bricks, you turn it back off. It will suck back in the old bucket of lava. To quickly get rid of the lava, he has a switch over here that goes with some sticky pistons. And now you can safely mine this and not have to worry about it. Uh, so that is his, uh, his design that uh, could potentially work. But uh, what I ended up doing today is I went with uh, Sin and Bilbo and we went out and found a stronghold. So I have about two stacks of the... Oh, come on, mouse, what are you doing to me? Look at that, that's just weird movement. I don't know why my mouse does that at times. Uh, it has to do with... Uh, well, it, it's not actually my mouse. If you can see the mouse when that's happening, uh, it's working just fine. But if for some reason, like when I'm sprinting and I turn, it doesn't like to keep the accuracy, I don't know. Something screwy is going on. Ah, uh, not there. 
charging. I got my first uh, Thumbcraft uh, enchanted book. I put 30 levels onto that just a little bit ago. Let's wrap it in around here. Mm -mm -mm. This is what it's like to go without a jetpack, except for that little floatiness there. Our lava tank has been holding steady. Now that I know that I should check it after every world restart to get it to go again, uh, that's pretty much what I do, and it works out pretty well. <laughs> so, but here is the end result. This is a very simple uh, Enderman spawner. And let's just piss off some people here. And now I'll go stand where the noise is only on one side. Yep, no, don't fall off the edge. Don't fall off the edge. There we go. But, you know, this is basically how it works. I, I don't think these are anything new and special, but we are to the point where we've gotten one. Uh, we all chipped in. Or, well, Sin had a couple of uh, Ender Eyes. And that got us started. Ah! That got us started, and we found the stronghold with that, which is actually underneath the freaking ocean, which is kind of annoying. Yeah! Don't you kill me, don't you kill me, I'm not regenerating! You bastard! He is a bastard. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to show things off, for crying out loud. Alright, let's get out of here. <laughs> Uh, so we use Sin's eyes to find the stronghold, uh, way that way, about a thousand blocks, and it's at the bottom of the ocean, which was fun. Uh, we made a little drop to get down into there, and actually, you know what, if the portal is still open, uh, it's technically Pillbox's portal setup, Is he's the one with the Atlas gun right now, uh, courtesy of Sin, but Sin had a spare one, and we used it to set up a quick little hop back and forth, ah, looks like it's still here. So, water spot. Shoosh. So, there's uh, Bilbo's portal up there. I'm not sure if it's active anymore. But, yeah, I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and following the, uh, following the eyes in an ocean is a little bit tricky if you want to make sure you get the eyes back. But, uh, let's turn that off. This is the place where the portal is. Actually looks really cool. I was hoping the Ender Starfield would actually look like this. And maybe it does, but it's all cinched up and squished. It doesn't have the parallax effect. Where the different layers are scrolling at different speeds. So, meh. I always thought I always hoped the stars would look like that, but they just ended up not doing that. Uh let me see, what else do we have to show? Let's go home real quick. I uh, spent a good amount of time uh, poking around the bees, trying to get the Imperial Bee set. Let's, um... Ba -do -do -do. Thank you. What the? What the? Stringy? How the heck does Stringy get all the way down here? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's crappy luck. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I should probably get these out of my hand. All right, let's take the drones. Let's ID some of the bees here. This is probably just pure majestic again. Yep, uh, I'm seem to be breeding imperial out of it. A pure majestic with beautific, majestic imperial. So you, there's still some hope from you, but you suck, you suck, and you suck. But I have nobody else. Ah, uh, Majestic Imperial Hybrid. Majestic Imperial Hybrid. So these are actually set to uh, only take something with Imperial in it. That way it'll automatically keep on going if there's an Imperial uh, uh, quality to it. Otherwise it pauses and waits for my interaction. But the stringy comb is a little weird. Uh, we should only be getting them from these guys. I wonder why it was sitting here on the ground. Oh, we'll just put it with the others for now. Makes life easy. Uh, no news over here. Uh, I did collect the materials, but I haven't gotten around to placing them 
uh, here. I'll also be replacing some of the full blocks with the uh, with some stairs and stuff like that to make it look like little bits and pieces are chipping out. So it, it should turn out to look pretty damn good. I might even... I was almost thinking that if I could make it look like a broken down rune, I could actually have like, you know, a 2x2 two two altar surrounded by an extra row and just like take out a block and crack another one or something like that. So it looks like it should have been a 3x3 three three altar, but all that's left functional is the 2x2. Two two. thought that that might be a little a neat motif to try, so we might do that. Um, another thing is, I put these here last night. I'm pretty sure I did this on camera, but I never actually explained what I was doing. Uh, I wanted these to be like little uh, leftover pillars and walls. It's like I'll put another piece there and there and there maybe, and then set up a couple of bookshelves or potion shelves or something like that to kind of make it look like the uh, a ruined wall of some kind. Uh, same with the the one that's over here. So a little bit of just some design stuff going on. Yep. Sun's going down. Let's hop into the bed real quick. But I actually think that uh, that brings us pretty up to date. Uh, the majority of my time online today was dealt just uh, uh, sitting there uh, getting bees to uh, trying to get the Imperial bees just to, to, to work and uh, you guys can see the results. I have beautific majestic bees. But I'd rather have Imperial Bees, because those are what you get the uh, the Royal Jelly from. And I've gotten Imperial a couple of times, I got four uh, pieces of Royal Jelly. I would just like to get it on a more reliable basis. Oh, uh, I do have one other... One other neat little thing to show you guys. Remember that Cloak of Distortion? Haha, <laughs> I made one. Uh, first though, I just wanted to... 16 to go... 60 already. Nice. Mm -mm -mm. So I'll only be able to do this twice because I only have two ender pearls. But I can always get more if I want to. Um, I hold down the shift key and then I right click my target. <laughs> oh. Oh. That teleported me through the glass. <laughs> very, very nice. I bet you if I right clicked it here though, it would just teleport me to the glass. And since I would rather go all the way back home. Uh, this is kind of like the Ender Pearl. Oh, there is a distance range. Look at that. Let's see if we can. Oh, it just unloaded that chunk. Rar. Uh, I want to see how far I can go. Let's uh, get a little bit closer here. Get a little closer. Alright, we got the edge of the mountain in view. Shift right click. Oh! No! No, I hit the wrong button. No! 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 Oops! 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 I don't even know my own power! What's going on here? No! Oop! Nobody saw nothing. This is not a floating... Whoa, it's not a floating anything. <laughs> uh, so what I did is I forgot to hold the shift key. So it just started uh, up the invisibility. And it's going to run out in six seconds. And... Ta-da! What? What? One minute. Oh. Uh, I have some time, I suppose. So it doesn't make your clothing invisible. But, so, I got it. <laughs> I figured I would, uh... Whoa. I figured I would let you guys see it. I'm not gonna be using it that often. As, you know, I'd rather just chuck the enderpearls. They don't really do much damage to me because of the armor and such I have on with the absorptions. Uh, but it is a neat little thing. Uh, invisibility. Not really worth it on its own. But uh, as an overall neat little bloop, bloop. You don't have to wait for the ender pearl to fly. You don't get damaged when it lands. So it definitely has its bonuses. Yeah. Jetpack level. So anywho, guys. Uh, just That was just a quick little roundup. We will return next time with a more complete episode. 
Uh, also look forward in the future. Um, we're updating the server. I'm not sure exactly where, when, or how, but I do know the why. Is uh, the reliability of Fragnet just has not been there. So we're actually looking to get a dedicated server that can run a couple of our uh, Minecraft hosts on. Um, we'll see how this goes. I'm currently in uh, discussion with a hosting company about some of their dedicated servers, their offerings, what they expect, what they see, that sort of deal. Uh, just to kind of get a, a feel of what's around and what's out there. So, uh, <coughs> things are changing. Uh, along with that change might be the return of a TFC series. We'll have to see about that. Uh, I've been speaking a little bit with Mead today. Uh, we, we just have to work out some logistics, see if there's something that can possibly be done there. Um, if not, then I'll just speak with the logistics of everybody else, but uh, a dedicated server should be able to run TFC as well as mucking, as well as the Feed the Beast server. Um, I'm even thinking of throwing back on a uh, Better Than Wolves server, where you just want a straight progression where everything kind of makes sense. That would uh, definitely be handy. New squish. He ate the grass. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So uh, next time, I'm hoping to work again on the Thongcraft room, start getting the tables, and actually start doing some of the research, because I'm really interested in uh, getting a pair of boots, getting access to creating the swords. Um, I, I don't know if I've showed you guys my collection, but I actually do have quite a few uh, Thaumic tools and weapons and such. Yeah, I actually just added one of each of the tools into the set again today as I got another axe, another pick, another shovel. But I'd like to actually be able to make these, as opposed to just collecting them. That way I can enchant them and not really have to worry about it. So, uh, it, to that end, I need the Thumbcraft table, I need to get my research done. So, that's still going to be my main focus, the projects, even though I hop, skip, and jump around. Like, now that I have the extra ender eyes, I can finish off the uh, gates for the bees. Um, as soon as I get the imperial bees, which, you know, just takes time, I can uh, get an alveary up, and that'll help me with some of the more complicated breedings. So we got a couple of pathways to go, but the, the Thongcraft stuff is definitely at the forefront right at this moment, just because I want to be able to finish off uh, the gear and such that I'm working on. Is uh, I want my boots of the Traveler. Yeah, no. Had to say goodbye to the Nano Boots. I want my Sword of uh, the Zephyr, and I'm even thinking about getting a handgun, because uh, after the Thongcraft, I miss my portal gun. I said I would only get it, only use them once I can craft them. So I need a nether star. And as soon as I get a nether star, I'll want to start using beacons and stuff like that. So I'll need more than a nether star. So that's uh, a, a uh, what you call it, a wither uh, spawner or a wither farm, is going to be one of our next priorities. Uh, I'm not using soul shards. They are on the. Oops. They are on the server. But uh, they don't interest me. I think that they make it a little too easy, so I have opted uh, to not use them. But we will work in the Nether. We will make a safe place, uh, a safe place from blazes, where we can hunt down the stupid Nether skeletons to our heart's content. So, uh, until that time, I uh, hope you guys all have a good evening and a good morning and such. And hopefully, I'll see you again in the early AM. Uh, I know my timing has not worked out, and it's always been evening episodes. Uh, I'm really hoping to sign off pretty quickly now, so that's why I'm not doing the hour-long episode. Get a good night's rest and get up tomorrow again and do the episode in the morning. So, um, have a good evening. I will talk to you guys next time. If there's anything you want me to cover or know more about, please let me know in the comments. Or if you just want to say hi, you know, I appreciate all the feedback that I get. Have a good one and talk to you guys later.